Two steps. Reduce the burden in short term by improving the early diagnostics, by better treatment, by earlier <coughs> treatment, and by stopping the exacerbations. The second step, prevent the burden in long term. And for that, to take a step from treatment to prevention, you should understand some of the true reasons of the epidemic which we have been facing. So let's take first the step one. The Finnish asthma program uh, was made, uh, started in 1994. It was a 10-year program. And basically, it was changing the first-line treatment of asthma from bronchodilators to anti-inflammatory medication. That was a really a paradigm change at that point. And there you see the 10-year results. And you all also can recognize that there was a major change for better. The patients were using less healthcare services in terms of hospital days, in terms of emergency visits. Their disab disability was reduced remarkably. And very interestingly, when we have a so-called asthma barometer follow-up, uh, we estimated in early 1990s that about 20% of our asthmatics do have severe symptoms. In year 2001, the number was 10%. In 2010, it was 4%. And now we have uh, unpublished data, 2016, it's 2.4%. There is not much room for the new biologicals in Finland. Well, uh, of course, when the patients were doing better, the costs were also uh, reduced uh, significantly. But let's go to the second step, prevent the burden, uh, which, is, which would be the real solution in long term. So we started, you remember the asthma program was ended 2004, we started the so-called allergy program 2008, and it's also a 10-year program, now enlarging the concept from asthma to all allergic conditions. And here you see the mid-term results. There's going to be a paper in European Respiratory Journal, which is in press. But you already see that in five years' time, we have uh, been able to reach uh, uh, many of the goals. The allergy program was, again, a paradigm change. We changed the avoidance strategy to tolerance strategy. We know that with the avoidance strategy, we haven't been able to improve the situation in terms of public health. We have improved the situation in many individual patients, no question about that. And avoidance will always be in the armamentarum of uh, a skillful clinician. Nevertheless, we change the idea from avoidance to tolerance. And not only in terms of immunology, but also in terms of psychology we started to change the attitudes of the population. So you, there you see some of the results. The food allergy diets, they have halved. Much of that, in fact, is because we have lessened purposefully the medicalization. But now they are about half what they were five years ago. Uh, we have uh, been able to reduce the occupational allergies by a preventive program in occupational uh, settings. We have been able to put down still the emergency visit of asthma by 46% and in children even 67%. And we have been able to reduce the costs, which is in stark contrast to other chronic diseases in Finland, for example, diabetes. 
Well, this was published recently in, uh, <clears throat> in Journal Allergy Clinical Immunology. And there you see a long-term cost follow-up of the asthma situation in uh, Finland during a period of 26 years, from 87 to 2013. And you see that the real costs of asthma, taking into account the direct healthcare cost and disability, they were at the start of this, in 1987, about 220 million, and 26 years later, they were 190 million. Even though the number of patients in our reimbursement register has tripled. Not so much because the prevalence is increasing so much, but we have been finding those patients from the population and treated them more effectively. Then we have made different scenarios, the minimum and maximum scenarios, what would have been if, uh, if things would have been the same as in the early 1990s. And we see that only in one year, 2013, uh, the theoretical cost saving was from 120 million to 470 million euros. Only in Finland for one year, population 5.5 million. So there you see the potential of savings which can be achieved also in Europe. They are huge. We have come up to this kind of a generic template which could be employed in any kind of a program. We should be precise with our goals, put the numerical goals there, and then we should define the tasks more precisely, what to do, the tools, how to do it, and the outcomes, how to measure the success and the results. And usually we can use those official registers. You, we don't need to find new sophisticated registering systems. We have all the data, in fact, in our societies, but they are very much underused. Then, of course, uh, we are living in the time of social media. We need main messages also for the public, and we really should use that. Well, what next in Finland? Well, we are planning to enlarge from asthma to all allergies to all non-communicable non uh, diseases. And there is again a paradigm change, and we are calling this action nature step. And we were, hearing, we were listening how Sesmi was talking about these issues a bit. But what we think is that we should increase the connection to nature. Uh, uh, we should uh, use the natural elements in the care of children and elderly. And we should uh, uh, promote in every possible way healthy use of healthy, fresh food. We think that in this way, we can slow down the increase of non-communicable diseases and we can uh, again uh, achieve major cost savings. And then the science should be focused a little bit uh, differently, looking for the ecosystem services uh, and with environmental people, uh, the medical people should work uh, together. Final slide. Uh, all these uh, conditions somehow come under the same umbrella and they do share a microbial imbalance, immune dysfunction and low-grade inflammation. That's our challenge.